So when people think of YouTube today, they think of it as the place where they watch vlogs and listen to music videos. But YouTube is actually this largest search engine in the world after Google. Now, most marketing teams today have an SEO strategy for Google, right? Very, very few have an SEO strategy for YouTube. And I'm not saying this to scold marketing teams at startups who already have a ton on their plate, okay? I'm saying this number one, because there's actually very little competition today on YouTube for keywords that your company would probably kill to rank for on Google. And number two, because right now, YouTube is actively pushing viewers towards new channels, which means that it's possible to get tens of thousands of views on a video without having very many subscribers to begin with. So in the rest of today's video, I want to map out a strategy step by step, a very simple strategy that I call the fisherman method that B2B startups can use to get started on YouTube, ranking for keywords they really care about and organically get five to 10,000 views per month on their videos. In this second part of the video, I'll also give you an example of a video that I would make if I were a startup that sells software to finance themes just to illustrate the fisherman method in practice. Okay, and quick disclaimer, there's already a ton of advice online about how to grow a YouTube channel if you want to become an influencer, right? So in this video, I want to focus specifically on how startups and businesses should think about YouTube because actually, the approaches are very different. Also, if we haven't met yet, my name is Mags. I've been making videos on YouTube and LinkedIn over the last year, both for my own business, Kiwi Cuts, and also other startups as well. So the best way to think about YouTube is it's basically a massive shopping center or a shopping mall for my American friends that sells two types of goods. One, entertainment, and two, education. In the entertainment aisle, you have vlogs, sports, prank videos, challenges, and so on. In the education aisle, you have tutorials, explainers, reviews, interviews, that kind of thing. Now, why do people normally go to the shopping mall? Two reasons. One, they go there because they're bored and they just want to browse some stuff without a very specific goal in mind of what they want to buy. Two, they actually do have something very specific they want to buy. And so they're going to the shopping mall to go and purchase that thing. And it's basically the same with why people go on YouTube. They're either there because they're bored and just want to pick from a list of videos recommended on their home feed. In that case, they'll probably choose something from the entertainment aisle I mentioned earlier, like Mr. Beast's one to $1 billion yacht video. That video has 360 million views right now. And these will all likely come from the homepage and suggested videos feed that no one would just go and type into the search bar, right? But the other reason people go on YouTube is because they do have something very specific they want to watch, right? Maybe they want to learn about some new idea or concept that's relevant to their work. Or they want to get an objective review of a high value purchase like an iPhone or a camera or a car. If that's the case, they'll rely not on the home feed in order to choose a video, but the search bar initially, and then probably the related video tabs on the right-hand side of whichever video they watch. In fact, 50% of traffic to videos on YouTube right now come directly from search within YouTube. And the reason that I make this distinction between the two paths of video discovery, let's say, is because a lot of startups think the following when they're thinking about whether to start a YouTube channel or not. They think, in order to be successful on YouTube, my videos need to get lots of views. In order to get lots of views, my videos need to get picked up by the algorithm, which means they need to get recommended into people's home feed. In order to get recommended to people's home feed, I need to make content from the entertainment aisle. So vlogs, entertainment videos, and so on, memes maybe. But the goal of maximizing views, let's call this the kind of influencer mindset, is only relevant if you want to build an audience on YouTube and make ad revenue, right? If that's your ultimate goal. This, I think, should not be the goal of businesses when it comes to YouTube. The type of content that your business should be making instead should come from the education aisle, not the entertainment aisle of the YouTube supermarket that I mentioned earlier. So that means stuff like tutorials, reviews, explainers, and so on. And that's because the long-term goal of your channel is not to maximize views, it's to funnel qualified leads towards purchasing your product. And the way that people discover videos from the education aisle is by using search, which means the mindset you need to have when you're thinking about YouTube and creating content for YouTube is not the influencer mindset, but the SEO mindset instead. And that means you need to be thinking about making videos around topics that have 
high search volume, low competition, and clear value to your business. The way to do this on YouTube is to follow what I call the fisherman method. So if you think about a fisherman, he or she will go out every day to catch a certain type of fish, right? Based on the type of fish that the fisherman is going after, he or she will be able to work out the kind of bait that they need to attract the fish. Then the fisherman will need to decide where to put his fishing net out. There's obviously a massive ocean out there, so he's really got to place his bets in a strategic way. One way to do that is to look at where other fishermen are fishing and seeing where they're having success. And so once he's found a good spot, he'll put his net out and everything else being equal, if he has better fishing equipment and more delicious bait, all the fish should go to him instead of the other fishermen, right? And it kind of worked the same way on YouTube. The first thing you need to do is to define what kind of audience you're going after and define what I would call your persona. This is kind of the fish that you're trying to catch, right? Once you've defined your persona, you need to figure out what kind of content they're searching for on YouTube already. Let's call this the bait. And also what related channels are producing content for that audience already. These are the other fishermen in our analogy. Then all we need to do is just to take the most successful videos on those channels and make better versions of those videos. Better in this case could mean more detailed, more up to date, or simply just better production quality so you might have better editing or video or audio whatever else it might be let me now illustrate this with an example let's say that i run a startup that sells procurement software to finance teams right the first thing i need to do is create a few user personas around who would normally buy my product let's say that one of my personas is a finance director who works at a mid-sized startup of 50 to 100 people I'll call him Finance Francis. One of the things that we know about Finance Francis is that his company is probably too small to have a whole separate team managing procurement. So a lot of procurement responsibilities will fall on him alongside everything else that he's doing. So there are things that he wants to learn about procurement that he will need to periodically look up in order to stay on top of his job, right? What we do next is then map out what those topics are. To do this, we could look at the search volume for procurement and procurement related terms on something like vidIQ, but there's other tools out there, or we could find other YouTube channels creating content around procurement and seeing which of these videos have outperformed in terms of their viewer to sub ratio. Once we found a set of keywords, gauge their search volume, we can look at other videos that have been created around those topics to see what the competition looks like. For example, we know that within procurement, there's a subtopic called procure to pay. And the most popular video on this topic has over 100,000 views and was published six years ago. And the views to sub ratio is over 100x, which means that this video has outperformed other videos on the same channel by 100. Now, I know that if I make an updated video on that topic in 2024, 2025, with a better thumbnail, better title, and more up-to-date content, my video will probably rank at the top of search results for Procure to Pay on YouTube. And if we actually click into this video, we'll see there's a lot of other stuff that we could improve on when it comes to production quality. You know, things like audio and video, which YouTube audiences are actually paying way more attention to these days compared to, you know, five, 10 years ago. Then before we write the script, we need to make sure we come up with a good thumbnail and title to get the viewer to click on it, obviously. Then as we're writing the script, we make sure that we have a really good call to action. One call to action might be to encourage our viewers to watch another video on our channel where we give a best in class demo of our procurement software. So this is how we leverage top of funnel content to push leads towards our bottom of funnel content. And look, if you're looking for help with anything from creating a YouTube strategy for your business to filming, editing your videos, I run an agency called KiwiCuts. We work with a few startups on the stuff already, so feel free to reach out and we can have a chat.